This is Monkey World in Dorset, the largest ape and monkey rescue centre on the planet. Today on Monkey Life... Hey, little man. Woolly monkey Paolo meets his new family for the first time. He's ready to go. He's eating solid food. Look at the size of the belly hanging out there. It's just enormous. Chimp Eddie has fun and games with baby brother Bart. And emotions run high when Mad Max the Marmoset arrives at the park. But that's what I'm saying to you. I don't want to fall out with it. I'm only here for him. You know what I'm saying? Monkey World is renowned for its work rescuing endangered primates from all over the world, including South America, Asia and Europe. But today, they're stepping in to help a monkey who's been living a little closer to home. Mad Max the Marmoset has lived with Sandra and her family in Stoke for just six months. I haven't got anything on And they're already finding him a challenge. You can see what Max is like. Very cheeky, wants to come out all the time. None of the kids will come in the room with him because he jumps straight on them and bites their ears. It causes quite a lot of damage as well. They do smell, they smell horrific. I think he's took me as his mate. He tries to mate with the back of my head constantly. Mad Max may only be a lightweight monkey, but he can still pack a punch. Watch out, Harvey, he'll get you. He's coming. He'll get you, bite you. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> this may all look like fun and games, and although Sandra has done her best, having an exotic pet is a huge responsibility. Animals are at risk from neglect, and many are often abandoned. In the past 20 years, 33 small monkeys have been rehomed at Monkey World from the British pet trade alone. And Max is about to join them. We feel now that Max should be with other monkeys, because it's cruel, basically, to keep him locked up in a cage. It's the right thing to do, and it's the right place for him to go. We just want what's best for him. Max was bred in a local pet shop and sold to a lady who kept him for only six months before deciding to sell him on. So we saw the advert in a local shop, went round, saw him, fell in love with him and bought him, and he, it was £900. Yeah, it was £900, so we bought him. We've had him now for about seven months. We don't feel as we want to sell him. Um, he shouldn't be in a cage, so we, we're prepared to let Monkey World have him and let him live a, a normal, natural life. I think we owe him that much. Although Sandra is very fond of Max, she now realises just how difficult looking after a small primate can be. We don't know anything about them. You know, they, they're, they're specialist animals. They should be kept with other monkeys. It's not fair to keep one on their own anyway. But as pets, I mean, they don't make fantastic pets. They, you know, they can be quite vicious, uh, very possessive. You know, you, you've got to find a specialist vet if he becomes ill, because your local vet more than likely won't handle him. And we'd only had him for two weeks, and we noticed he wasn't well. We took him to a vet in Chester that specialises in exotic animals, and straight away she, she had a look at him, and his tail was broken due to the uh, lack of vitamin D3 in his diet, so his tail had to be amputated, and that was in, like, a fortnight of us buying him. At the moment, it's not illegal for pet shops to sell marmosets, but all too often, new owners are not given the correct information about how to care for them. I do think now that the pet shops shouldn't be allowed to just sell these monkeys to the general public. Anyone can buy one. You wouldn't keep a dog locked up in a cage all day, so, you, you know, you shouldn't keep a monkey locked up all day. OK, yeah, we'll put him right side up, first of all. Later, Max arrives at Monkey World, and Alison is concerned. He's actually obese. <laughs> He's just enormous. He has a ton of fat all around his shoulders, and he actually has boobs. And pregnant orangutan Amy gets to grips with a breast pump. The likelihood is that Amy's not going to rear this baby. So what we're doing is giving ourselves a few alternatives. Over in Paddy's chimp troop, 16-month-old baby Bart is being babysat by the rest of the group, whilst mum Susie takes the morning off. 
He's loving his newfound freedom and is hitching a ride from anyone that will carry him. In the wild, female relatives will often play a key role in the childcare duties, as babies are seen as a very precious addition to the group. Like human babies, Bart craves attention and contact and loves it when the female chimps mother him. And today, everyone wants a piece of Bart. Even his big sister, Eddie. Siblings often take over parenting if a young chimp is orphaned or separated from mum. So this is Eddie's chance to show how responsible she can be. But she's a little over-enthusiastic in her approach to rough and tumble. Especially tumble. Susie's keeping an eye out as Eddie moves on to the next stage of her babysitting operation. Climbing high up on the frames with her little brother clinging onto her. It looks like Susie's morning off is over. Time for Mum to step in. Across the park, Mad Max the Marmoset has finally arrived on site. Park director Alison and the team are on hand to meet the latest small monkey to come from the British pet trade. So this is Max? Yes, this is Max. Hey, little man. OK, so he's quite a big lad. He's taken to his new home, the Marmoset house, where Alison can assess his condition. He looks, I mean, his general physical condition is not bad. You've, yeah. you know, done a good job in that sense, and he's quite active and, and confident as quite well. Happy, so he doesn't clearly... know anything else, does yeah. he? You know, he's, he's happy. He's probably a little bit chubby because I think the kids have been giving him yeah, he is... bits of marshmallows. <laughs> At first sight, Max may look healthy, but Alison can tell that there are some underlying problems. The owners were concerned about his nutrition and, if anything, they thought he might be sort of underweight and not eating so well. He's actually obese. <laughs> He's absolutely enormous. He should actually be a similar size to our youngest little Marcel. He's just enormous. He has a ton of fat all around his shoulders, and he actually has boobs. So um, that's just all excess body weight. The signs tell Alison that one-year-old Max has had a difficult start in life. Within that year, He's been taken away from his mother, shoved in his cage, sold on in a pet shop, not given the appropriate diet, had his bones break, had his tail amputated, moved to another house where the lady couldn't cope with him there, sold on to another owner who then fed him up so much that he's now obese, but at least, you know, they were trying to do the right thing. And now they realize because he's so intensely aggressive with people that he doesn't make a good pet and he needs to be with others of his own kind. Sandra and her family have looked after Max with the best intentions, but it's time for Alison to deliver some home truths. No, that's what, that's what I'm saying to you. That's I why this... out with it. I'm only here for him. I know. I know, but this is the whole point, what I'm saying about the trade, is that the vets most of the time aren't specialists, so that they, they don't actually know. And whereas you're doing the right yeah, thing by I'm him. I'm here. That, that's why I'm here, because I, I don't want anything else to happen to him. Initially, I mean, he wasn't aggressive or anything to start with. Obviously, we realise now why he's aggressive. He wants out, you know. Yeah, he needs to be with others of his own. As we can. I know, that's why I what called you and said I'd work with you on this. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you, it's a... You know, it's a fine line. I can sit here and try and placate the previous owners and try and give them all of the reassurance that they did the right thing for Max, and I know they meant to, but this is just, once again, the lady gets upset when I say to her, he hasn't had the appropriate diet. He's overweight. She doesn't like hearing those things, but I'm afraid it is the truth. He's antisocial because you've kept him in solitary confinement. He's obese because he's eaten wrong foods and gets fed sweets by the kids. 
He's got a broken tail that had to be amputated at only a year old because he hasn't been given the appropriate diet. Wrong, wrong, and wrong again, even though these are well-meaning individuals. And this is the whole point about the laws in Britain today. They're not protecting Max or any of the others that are out there. I'll be the first person to admit For we're just ignorant to, the, you know, yeah. it's, it's a pet and you think initially that it's fine, it, you know, mm -hmm. we can look after it, but at the end of the day, we can't. We don't know nothing about them and it's, it's cruel. Although Sandra's sad as she says her goodbyes, she knows Max will be well looked after. Loads happier. I think it's, we've done the right thing, definitely. I think it's a fantastic place, and I think he'll be happy. There are two groups of woolly monkeys living at Monkey World, and today, new baby Paolo is going in with his new family for the very first time. Hey, little man. He looks very sleepy right now. Those little eyes are dropping off. So, you know, this introduction might go so calmly and so smoothly because he just simply falls asleep. But we'll have to wait and see what happens here. Paolo is one of five woolly monkeys born at the park. But sadly, he was rejected by his mother at birth and had to be hand-reared by Alison and Mike. At three months old, the team decided that Paolo was advanced enough to introduce him to his own kind. Look at this. He was allowed to spend time with his half-brother, Julio, who was also hand-reared by Alison. Good boy. From the day he was born, he was far more advanced than Julio. And you have to remember that it wasn't until Julio's seven-month birthday that we started leaving him in with the woolly monkeys. So Paolo here is coming along quite, quite a lot quicker. When I spend evenings with Paolo now, I only think that I'm holding him back. I'm not a good enough climbing frame. I don't have a good enough climbing frame at my house, and I'm not a woolly monkey. So those are the things that he needs now. He needs to climb proper, and he needs to be with other woolly monkeys, not with me. So today, at four months old, it's been decided that Paolo is ready to spend some time alone with the group that will eventually be his new family, Bueno's group. It's a great environment for Paolo to grow up in, as there are plenty of lively youngsters for him to learn from, including new baby Inca. She's only three months younger than Paolo and should make an ideal playmate. Yeah, so if you keep trying to encourage them... Back in the playroom, it's time for Paolo to meet the family. Hey, little man. He's ready to go. Um, he's eating solid food. He feeds himself. You can see, I mean, look at the size. He's just had breakfast. Look at the size of the belly hanging out there. It's, you know, it's just enormous, big Buddha belly. So he's really ready to go. Um, but he still is just over four months old and therefore still emotionally very clingy. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a fine balance between spoiling him but giving him enough reassurance that he feels confident. So we don't want to turn this into a nasty situation where he thinks, oh, no, I'm just going to be upset. So we do short bursts, try and make it as stress-free as possible, and uh, let him relax with the other monkeys. And that seemed to do the trick with Julio anyway, so we're, we're pretty confident that Paolo will fit in here really well. When the group enters the bedroom, Paolo looks a little nervous and tries to stay near to Alison, his adoptive mum, for safety. Okay, so if you, somebody comes and talks to him and settles him down and stuff, I'm going to leave this in the kitchen. But it's important that he meets the others on his own, so Alison leaves the bedroom and stays out of sight. Left to his own devices, Paolo finally finds his confidence and begins to explore. Alison hopes that the other woolly monkeys will leave Paolo alone to get used to his surroundings. And it's looking good. They are far more interested in their lunch than their new visitor. It's a great start to the introduction, 
as too much attention from the other monkeys could intimidate baby Paolo and make him anxious. This is a real adventure for the little one, and he seems to be taking it all in his stride. It won't be long before he can move into Bueno's group and live with his fellow woolly monkeys full time. Later, marshmallow-loving Max the Marmoset gets to grips with a wriggly delicacy. In the orangutan house, pregnant Amy has been learning how to be a good mum. She's had four babies in the past, but only Gordon survived, who had to be hand-reared. So, for the past few weeks, primate care staff have been getting Amy used to the idea of both handling and feeding a baby, using a toy monkey and a breast pump. The likelihood is that Amy's not going to rear this baby. Now, it would be brilliant if she proved us all wrong and just picked her up and started suckling it straight away, but that's pretty unlikely. So what we're doing is giving ourselves a few alternatives so that we can either express milk from her with the breast pump or if she'll allow the baby to suckle, actually have the baby suckle from her through the little uh, door we've cut in the mesh. She's become a lot more patient, more so with the pump than with the, the puppet baby. But what we're doing now is extending the time that we can keep it stuck on her nipple. In real terms, if the baby was having to suckle from her, it would need to stay on the nipple for quite a while. Same deal if we're actually using the breast pump to express milk from her. We need to be there for a while to express enough milk to make, uh, to make a bottle full or whatever. So we're gradually building up the time that she'll stay in the one position, and she's being pretty good with it. But like any pregnant mother, all this preparation and planning takes its toll, and Amy could do with a reliable birthing partner to help out. And that's where her old pal Jeremy steps in. What? Let me, I go in my pockets, you don't go in my pockets, you just, there, that's what you want, isn't it? Um, all I'm doing, really, is just getting the used to me being in, in here and just start hanging out rather than doing anything specific. Um, actually, one thing she does like, and, of course, you don't want to spend all your time just feeding her, one thing she does like is neck and back massages. So, this is something that, are you should be ready? This is something that isn't going to make her fat, isn't going, but it is getting the contact, which might help. But if you do this for long enough, do this for long enough, she, go, she can go quite silly and beanie. She goes like a beanie doll on me. But Amy has an ulterior motive for letting Jeremy get close to her. But I've got no more. There's nothing else. Oh, actually, there is. <laughs> Look what I just found in my pocket. A little Amy treat. <laughs> That is the last one. Amy loves her food, and now that she's eating for two, she's allowed to be greedy. Amy doesn't need an excuse to eat more. Amy's just an eating factory. It's what Amy's do, they just eat. You OK, Poppet? Is that enough? Can I go now? I'm going. Jeremy will continue to spend time with Amy over the coming weeks. It's all right with you? So that when she finally gives birth, he can be there if she needs him. Back in Monkey World's Marmoset house, new arrival Mad Max is getting used to his new surroundings and his new diet. Max ran riot in his previous home in Stoke, chewing the furniture and sharing the children's sweets and treats. But here at the park, that's all about to change. As soon as we get Max in with the other individuals, his whole diet's going to change. He might prefer marshmallows over mealworms at this point in time, but as soon as he sees all of the other guys pushing and shoving for the mealworms and there are no marshmallows on offer, he'll very quickly learn what an appropriate diet is and he'll be just as keen. So today, he's being given a meal more suited to a marmoset, stick insects. It's unlikely that he's ever eaten a live insect before, and the staff are unsure how he'll react. But they needn't have worried. He's instantly reverted to his natural instincts and can't wait to get his hands on the fascinating feast. 
And the fact that this snack wriggles from time to time just makes it more interesting. If all goes well, Max will eventually join the other bachelor group of marmosets currently living at Monkey World. Outside, the marmosets are also being given stick insect snacks. These guys are all pros when it comes to foraging for food. Marmosets are omnivores and spend half their day searching for fruits, nectar and animal prey, like spiders and insects, which make up an important source of protein in their diet. They also have excellent eyesight, which makes them good at detecting camouflage prey amongst the trees. These two are experts at finding their food and quickly polish off the lot. But soon they'll have competition. Max seems to have quickly got the hang of insect eating and should fit right in when he joins them in the enclosure. Next time. It's a day of introductions, as Mad Max the Marmoset meets his new housemates. As he's never lived with any other marmosets, he might be very aggressive or frightened. Yep. Chimps Ben and Pip are in shock after another meeting with alpha male Hananya. Yeah. What happened? Who put that big monkey in here, for goodness sake? And baby Bart enjoys his first taste of honey.